Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. Welcome back to another Sunday special where I interview people that are fully embracing Web3 to build businesses and are going far beyond speculation. Today, I will share my conversation with an amazing guest, Somi Arian. She describes herself as being a tech philosopher and the founder of Fempeak Platform, where visionary individuals come to stay in the know ahead of the curve with business and technology. She is super passionate about giving information to people that help them to onboard into Web3, investing and having financial empowerment. The main reason I want to share this conversation with her is because she is as committed to educating the 99% of people that have not arrived in Web3 as I am. So without further ado, let's get to the conversation. Right now, we're in the wild west of just testing things out and everyone's making things uh, up as we go. But as someone such as yourself, who's really building a business and a voice in this platform, we see the future as this being something that's going to be integrated in day-to-day life. So that's really the type of things that I highlight. And when your team reached out to me saying that uh, you have this platform, uh, you're very involved with education and all of that, that's what really got me interested in. I do understand that you do have a mint and all that coming up. However, the part that really excited me is the fact that you have so much content out and you're an educator in the space. And I think that's needed more than anything, really. So I'm excited to uh, sit down and have a chat with you. Of course. Yeah, my pleasure. I see that you are quite well-rounded. You travel, you do so many things. So what really attracted you to Web3 to actually get you into the space and seeing what's going on here? I call myself a tech philosopher. I studied philosophy of science and technology and politics, political philosophy. So I see a a strong correlation between technology and the evolution of uh, human society. For me, it all comes down to what life is all about, which is overcoming entropy. That's what life is about. That's what makes us special as uh, a species because we've been very successful at doing that. And Web3 and things like decentralization, this is the next generation of how we organize ourselves, really. I'm interested in Web3 from that point of view. I actually just gave a TED Talk this Friday, and it was about decentralization is the next generation of democracy, essentially. I was saying the next generation of democracy is being built on the next generation of the internet. Are you ready for it? And that's why I'm interested in it, because I think this is the next evolution in uh, humanity. And putting together AI and blockchain, uh, the the combination of these two things, and of course, genomics, I think we've got a very exciting time ahead. And I want to be part of it. I want to be ahead of it. And even our NFT drop is also about that. It's, It's really focused on celebrating people who want to be in the forefront of technology and science. You just touched a lot of things that I'm very interested in, even the genomics. That's something that I just really discovered for the most part within the last two weeks or so, as far as being Web3 and how to enable that on the blockchain, that just blew my mind. So that's the area where right now that I'm geeking out about. So uh, it's pretty uh, amazing that you just mentioned that. So it just really shows to me that you do have a wide array of interest and understanding of where all of this space can go. So that's very interesting. And the fact that you're doing these talks is even more amazing. Why is education so important for you in this space? I was born and brought up in Iran. I was born during the Iran-Iraq war. And I didn't have access to a lot of things that people have access to in the West. So I had to educate myself. And I realized that knowledge is power. And the more I learn, the more I have a chance to change my life. Uh, And that works really well for me. I really want to empower other people because I feel like the more, the better decisions you can make. And the more empowered you are to ask the right questions about the things that you don't know. So I'm fascinated by constantly learning and that's why I do what I do. And I'm looking for people who are hungry. I want to work with people. I want to support people who are hungry, who work hard, who are really interested in making an impact on the future of humanity. And for me, life is so much more interesting than just living. Like I I don't want to just live it. I want to create real new experiences. And you can't do that without knowledge. That's why I do it. 
That's awesome. I see a lot of alignment with our goals and mission because one of the things too is I'm not really someone who wants to sacrifice impact just to make income. And hearing what you just said really aligns with that. And that's one of the reasons why I do various things. As we discussed before we started this, is that I'm currently in Jamaica. I was fortunate to grow up in New York, be exposed to technology and the internet at a very young age. But when I came back to Jamaica, it seemed like I had a superpower, which I thought was like normal. And so I started to just basically spread and educate this thing too. So I'm really excited to see that you said that because although uh, worlds apart, Iran and Jamaica, but as far as development and needing that access and seeing the freedom for it, that really excites me, which really brings us to your platform. I see you have uh, this FemPeak platform, which I see that the how it's introduced is Web3 educational platform, which uh, prepares companies and individuals to participate in ownership economy, which is very interesting itself. So I would love to hear more about that as far as uh, what's your goal for that? What are you doing with it? We pivoted into Web3 when we felt that the time was right. I have been interested in blockchain technology and been educating myself in it and, and studying it since 2018, but I didn't publicly talk about it because of the the fight, if, if you will, around everything to do with crypto and a tokenization. Around November, when the NFT culture started to really blow up, I, I thought, okay, people are ready for it. I think NFTs are the gateway to educate people in this space and the gateway to making things more accessible. So the the platform already existed and we were focusing on bringing more women into technology and business. Initially, it was mostly focused on women, but then we realized that actually for us, if we were going to be a women-only platform, it wouldn't work because women needed to be able to communicate with a larger network. And at the same time, we didn't want to be in a position where we were bringing in these really amazing women who were experts in their fields, but then they would be seen as experts only by other women. We wanted to give them a bigger you know, audience and network. So we decided to open up. And us, although we are women-led, we are now open to everybody. And we have got members who are men, who are uh, non-binary. So we are completely open uh, and inclusive. And Web3 is a gateway. The way I see it, Web3 is a really good term. Uh, I like that term, Web3, because I feel like it sounds a lot better than, say, cryptocurrency or a lot of other kind of terms that have been better known in this space, but may have had slightly negative connotation for some people who are not familiar with it. Whereas Web3 is saying, basically, this is the next generation of the internet. And it it just makes more sense because then people are like, okay, so we are in Web2 now. So I need to learn about Web3 because it's the next thing. And then as they come in, they realize that they also need to learn about all these other things like DAOs and and the metaverse and, and tokenization, all that stuff. So that's why we decided to a brand the company as a Web3 education. And right now, this is of the moment. However, we've already done quite a lot around AI as well. And we've done some really interesting cutting edge content around health tech as well. So right now we are going to be focusing on over the coming months on Web3. But my passion has always been the bigger picture of the connection between philosophy, technology, science and macroeconomy. And so yes, we are right now, we are we need to build our content around Web3 right now and teach people as much as we can. That's why our NFTs are going to be really focused on the whole picture of the connection between technology, philosophy, science and a macroeconomy. I sat down and wrote the whole roadmap for the NFTs this weekend. The page is going to go live by the end of this week. And it's going to tell a very clear story of where my thinking is and where we're going with this. So we want to attract people who are passionate about science, technology, philosophy, and macroeconomy and arts. I think arts is also a very important part of this. 
It's very interesting because you touched a lot of things also that for me, I love to say that NFTs are probably going to be the gateway for most people into this space because it's something that we can relate to from such a young age. We like to collect, whether it is stones or cards, our favorite athletes, posters back in the day for us, the CDs. So I think collection and for me, for myself, that's really what got me into NFTs because I had friends that have been trying to get me into crypto and all of that for the longest time. But the whole speculation of things, it was really not appealing to me because it was always presented to me as get rich quick. And that's just not in line with me. So when I saw that you can do so much with smart contracts in the blockchain beyond that story, I was like, why aren't you guys sharing this narrative? You would have got me in so much earlier. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that's great that you're doing that because there's honestly so much, like it's an untapped world. We're just at the tip of the iceberg right now. And just so much is going on. So I'm excited that you're having this platform, you're sharing with other people. And of course, being women led and, and bringing it in, because I find that with educational platforms and things like this and building for the future, I've Personally, I see that women have more of a patient and broad view of where things are going as opposed to all of my male friends that are just looking at the quick flip. So I'm excited to see that you're doing so much more. And although you mentioned your NFT project, it was really so much was said around that other than the NFT and the NFT is being used in it and not the end all. So that is... Oh, no, uh, the NFTs are... <laughs> The, uh, the platform is not about the NFTs. The mm-hmm. NFT is about the platform, if you will. If the platform has got its own membership, like the NFT is, is a secondary thing that we are using it as a way to celebrate and to represent people who care about the connection between these areas that we just discussed. In addition to being a, a tech philosopher, another way that I describe myself as a transition architect, like somebody who is help create, architect the way that we transition from one technology to another in our lifetime. And there's going to be many transitions. There's already been a lot of transitions, but the transitions are going to increase and the speed is going to increase. So blockchain is not the end of it. We have got the next thing is quantum computing. So I'm already doing a lot of research on that. And I'm thinking about how that's going to disrupt blockchain technology. So that's going to be the next thing. So in my lifetime, I'm going to see several of these disruptions. We had the digital transformation. Now we have blockchain technology and the combination of that with AI. And then we have quantum computing. At this time, I don't know what will be the next thing, but at the very least, I know that quantum computing is five to 10 years away and it's already showing quite a lot of promise. I think that we're living in a very interesting time and we are moving very quickly towards the singularity. This time that technology is going to move so fast that we really don't have any paradigms previous paradigms to deal with. So that's what interests me. That's what excites me, gets me out of bed. I know a lot of people find it scary. I am just excited by it. I'm not saying that I'm not scared because it's a change, right? There's so many things that we don't know. I guess I'm not scared. I'm definitely not scared, but I'm in awe of technology. I'm just really fascinated by it. I'm like, bring it on. It's a wave, it's a tsunami, and I'm excited by it. So our NFTs represent the kind of people who have that belief. So some of the things that, some of the perks that we are going to give away as we grow this NFT project, for example, there may be people who will be able to go uh, to CERN with me or to go stargazing. Like, I really want to explore the universe and and that's what excites me and i want to be surrounded by people who have that similar kind of passion it sounds interesting i have a question about the nft when i was reading the outline of it what, what you do have up currently that was something that jumped out to me i want to see if this is still up to date it said that it's going to be a free mint is is that correct there is a free mint for our members. Members get one for free and then they get one airdrop to them for free. And there is, and they also get it. They also can mint one for free. There, we are also giving away a number of them for free through contests and things like that. Then the, the mint itself is going to be very small amount. It's um, to help us obviously raise funds. We are a startup, but the mint is going to be 0.02 ETH, you know, so like $60. So very a small amount. So it's a very small amount. 
But as we grow, and also you will need that as we grow. The first one has got women of different background, but the second one, the second collection that's in a few months, it's based on the same picture. It's all based on a picture of me, but then it reimagines what I would look like if I was a man. And then that would like, so it would be men, non-binary, LGBT, all sorts of people of all sorts of backgrounds. And I think that's going to be also quite fun. And the the pictures are against the, the backdrop of the solar system, which is a nod to Elon Musk, who has been a big um, you know, influence on me. And the pictures are based on a picture of me when I was in a metal band. And that was highly also influenced by philosopher Nietzsche that I'm a big um, you know, fan of. And, and he talks about music without music, life is a mistake. And I think that's so true. So I picked up a picture that was of me when I was in a band. So that's the the story. Once we have the full NFT page, you will be able to read all of that. But we have free mint opportunity as well. We are giving away quite a number through various contests and things like that. And then there will be also the rest of it will be like for 0.02 ETH. Which is very accessible because uh, someone very even... Accessible. Yeah, which is, I can't really complain about that compared to some of the astronomical mint prices that we're seeing these days. And even, as I said, you know, being in- I just bought, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. I just bought, uh, I just minted a Moonbird for two and a half. It's funny you bring that up because I was watching your video explaining your experience on that. Of course, the bad side and the good side. Yeah, (laughs) I know. It was like, it was so stressful. (laughs) Yeah, I I could imagine because as someone who was just a spectator in it, I, I was just watching on the sidelines. And even for me, there was this crazy emotions. I'm watching the numbers and seeing how everyone was reacting on Twitter. I was like, man, I'm stressed and I'm not even in this. <laughs> I know, yeah. Right. <laughs> how was that? Because that, I, I know one of the questions I like to ask anyone that's on a project or on the inside of the business world, what type of things do you like to collect? Because it's one thing to collect and then it's another to be the actual founder running it. So, it, it's, so for me, it's less about collection. I buy into projects because I want access to the community. That's why I very simply put the picture of a bird. Okay, that's very cute. The fact that it's worth so much now, that's nice. But I'm not planning to sell it. I bought that because I wanted to be in the proof community. And I was priced out of the proof pass because it was just too expensive for me. So this was the next best thing to get into that community because I wanted to be able to invite them on my podcast, meet people in that community and talk to them about what I'm building, look for potential collaborations. So same thing with BFF. I bought, I minted that. I minted a a World of Women Galaxy. I buy into these things because I care about communities. For me, it's not necessarily about the art. That's like a secondary thing. And it's a nice thing. It's just really cute to have that, that thing now. But it's less about money, less about the art, more about the communities. I'm, I buy into NFTs that I'm interested in the communities. Since we're on that topic, I, I have a question that would help a lot of the female listeners and family members and uh, people around me that I speak to, because for whatever reason, the majority of the people that actually uh, gravitate to me in person when I'm doing different talks happen to be female. And I try to do different ways of trying to communicate to see what's going to hit. So what would you communicate as this is the true value of this whole NFT Web3 thing uh, to get into it? Because uh, it, although my wife listened to me record just about every single one of these podcast episodes, every now and then she'll still ask me, so what's the big deal about this again? And I say, oh man, I'm not doing a good job of explaining this. And I start should again and try from a different angle. <laughs> you should join Fan Peak. You should tell her to join Fan Peak because we have got sessions where we have a session uh, which is free to watch actually that one on the platform and it's called crypto for non-believers and in that session i explain exactly what this whole thing is about so not just the nfts book but, but the tokenization it's, itself as a whole so she should definitely join the platform and and she would learn about that stuff what's your question about what nfts are about or what our nfts oh, are about? even in this case if she was asking okay this is sounds like an interesting project but why should I be really interested in this particular NFT? Like, why? I understand that you said it has those benefits attached to it, but someone that is a skeptical person of the NFT space, but might see the value. 
the the simple answer is I don't I'm not here to convince anybody that they can、mm. just go and watch my YouTube series, check the platform. If they're interested, they can join. I'm not going to try and convince anybody. We I have a limited bandwidth, and I'm like I'm just like I'd rather focus on giving. If if people can't see it. If it's not on their radar, they can't see it. It's like digital marketing or digital transformation. Like ten years ago, fifteen years ago, many people didn't see it and they didn't get involved, and they still continue to create magazines and print and try to do all sorts of other ways of building businesses and commun and marketing. They didn't get on board with social media. They didn't get on board with、uh, all all the different things with podcasts, things like that. It's like somebody asking you, "Why does podcast matter?" You know、mm-hmm. what I mean? Like in a similar way. If you're not into podcast, you're not into podcast, and you're missing out on quite a lot of things. So in a similar way, I think if somebody listens to me, I have so much content out there. There's so much recording, so much videos. If you watch. My video about crypto for non-believers, and by the end of it, you still don't get it, and you are not interested. Then I don't know what else I can say, right? So that's great.、Um, uh, I'll actually, after this, I will look for that link and I'll share it with a couple of people because a lot of people、yeah. enjoy me participating in it. But they're、yeah. like, I don't see where I really fit into this. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, eventually, just like myself, my friends were in it for two years before I came into it. There's just going to be some light bulb come on, <laughs> and I、yeah. truly believe that eventually they're going to get there. Like everyone, it's just everyone's time horizon is different. So I do appreciate that answer, and I do appreciate that aspect of it, and you taking the time、uh, to do that. So, is there anything that you would like to just leave any kind of parting words or thoughts that you would like to just sum up everything that we've spoken about? And I really enjoyed this talk, but what would you like to leave the listener with? Yeah, sure. I would say that don't be a Passive observer, be an active participant because that's what life is about. And if you don't get involved, like even one week, sometimes even one day later, you are missing out. And I don't mean to create FOMO here. It's more about the fact that the space is moving so fast. Who knows how long it will be before the next moonbird will happen? If you missed out on the first thing, it's quite hard to get onto the next thing. So being an early adopter really pays. There's ways that you can, eventually, that you can make up for not being early, and that is by paying a lot of money. Whereas if you are early, you have that upside. There were people who were early days of Bitcoin who were getting these codes for free and. Like people were giving away for free. Like now, look at how much that is, how valuable that is. That technology is democratizing, but it's only democratizing if you get involved. It can't free you if you don't want to be involved. That is very quotable, right there. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> love that, and I'm going to definitely use that, and I'll definitely give you credit for it. But I love that quote. <laughs> awesome. So. I really enjoyed this talk, and I will be following what you're doing. I'm interested in this project and the whole education aspect of it. I really love that and accessibility. It's just so many things. I think is is great. I'll definitely be、uh, following you and uh, sharing uh, more as this develops. Perfect. Thank you. So hopefully you enjoyed the conversation I had with Somi as much as I did. There were a couple key takeaways that I wanted to really jump on, and first and foremost is that it's not our job to convince anyone to do anything. We can present the information and just hope and expect that eventually they'll arrive in Web three. Some people just cannot see the vision, and there's some people still that see social media as a waste of time, despite the fact that so many businesses came in five years after the individuals came in and really pioneered the space, and they have built huge businesses off of it. There are always going to be doubters. There's always going to be spectators, and those that just have no desire to get involved. There's nothing we can do to change that. However, for those that are truly curious and trying to figure out, it is still our job to educate, share some great information. And I'm absolutely excited that she has this Fempeak platform that is coming out, or I should say, that's already out. But more things are coming and being built on it, and it is fempeak.io. I'll leave that link in the show notes. 
Also, I'll leave a link to her experience buying the Moonbirds. I thought that was very exciting. Uh, a lot of drama went on there, and I didn't even go fully into it during this interview, but it's very interesting nonetheless. And of course, anyone that is interested in that Crypto for Non-Believers link, I'll also put in the show notes, so you might be interested in that as well. If you enjoyed this interview and this content, I would greatly appreciate it if you left a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to this right now in that podcasting app, because it does help. The more reviews, the more people see it, they're more likely to click it to listen to for the first time. So I greatly appreciate it if you do take the time to do that. Thank you for listening to this as we learn and build Web3 together. Until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.